Hi YouTube family, welcome into today's video. About a year ago, my good friend Sherry from Graceful Beauty came up with this concept of makeup at such and such an age. And I, I went right to her and I said, Sherry, can I please do this video too after she'd done hers? But I think that the draw to those particular videos was actually seeing the age. I'm 51 now um, and I really don't feel like there should be any holdback for any of us on makeup. I feel like we should all be enjoying makeup and we should all be enjoying whatever we want to as far as colors and textures and all that kind of stuff. Now there is a certain amount of stuff that as we age, we have to tweak a little bit. I realize that, I'm sure you realize that too, but there is a lot of tips and tricks that we can do to make our aging faces look their very best with makeup. And so that's what I wanted to bring to you to today was kind of a get ready with me. I'm gonna go through all of my makeup and I'm going to pick out just specific things that I feel like that as an aging woman that I do that really make a difference in my overall makeup look. And so then you can try it and see whether or not it's something that's gonna work for you. And I hope that some of the tips do work for you. Anyway, this is gonna kick off a little bit of a 51 year old series where I'm going to be showing you some more specific videos. So I do hope that all of that is going to interest you guys as I carry on the series and as I go through several looks and address different parts of our faces that we need to do just a little bit differently because we are aging. Okay, okay, that's enough talking. Let's get into this video. I hope that you do enjoy it. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you do. Thank you guys so much. And now you're gonna see my bare face. Okay, bare face, here we go, you guys. I feel like to start with as a mature woman and 51 years old that I have to prep my face before I even start in with foundation or eyeshadow or anything like that. So the first thing I do is I try to hydrate my lips. I put on just a tiny bit of gloss to be sitting there while I'm doing my makeup. Um, I like a little bit of a thicker gloss so that it kind of really hydrates and can really plump up. And then the next thing I do is I go underneath my eyes with the Catrice Liquid Camouflage Under Eye Primer. Some people have said that they don't like this. I love it because what it does for me is it preps that under eye area with a lot of hydration. And I have really bad dark circles and all that yummy good stuff. So I'm going to be unhappy with any part of my makeup. It's absolutely going to be my under eyes because they're so crepey and they have so many wrinkles underneath there and folds. So I feel like prepping that area, getting it lightened up, getting it color corrected is the most important part for me to begin with. I'm also going to use my NYX Angel Veil. I feel like it's really important as we age to try and smooth out our complexion underneath our foundation. Lots of people don't like primer. If you don't, that's fine. But I use it to take care of the big pores that I have, which have big pores on my nose, right there on my cheeks, and then forehead and chin. So I will just kind of really pat it in well in those areas, and then I'll kind of spread it out to the rest of my face. Pushing it into your pores helps diminish those pores and helps keep that oil at bay that could break through during the day. After I put on my primer, then I like to color correct. Right now I'm enjoying the LA color. I think this one is the peach one or the apricot one. I find that the consistency of this and how it works well underneath concealers is just really good. So that's what I've been using to brighten up those dark spots underneath my eyes. I've also recently been using it to do a bit of color correction just around on my face on parts that are really dark. Um, I have some age spots or some old scarring on the sides of my cheeks right here. So I've been using that quite a bit. And then I will just go in and lightly work that in. I don't wanna move it too much because what happens when you move it is that it, it will shear out too much and not do its own job. Now, one of the tricks that I love as a mature woman is using guide tape for your eyeshadow as you're putting it on. This is from Sephora. You get a, a spool of it that is about $6, I think, and it lasts me such a long time. And then what I do is I line it up right here on the eye. You're gonna see that there is a fold right there. Hopefully that's gonna come across in camera. I'm gonna push it down. See that fold right there? I'm looking in my viewfinder, sorry. That fold right there is kind of gonna be the guide for where you want this tape to go below. Because if you put the tape above that little fold, what's gonna happen is you're not going to be able to blend your eyeshadow down there. So you wanna make sure that you put it below. So I just put it down there where I, about where I think the eyeshadow should start. 
to the tail end of the eyebrow. I'm prepping my eyelids with the Anastasia Beverly Hills eyeshadow primer. You guys, this is the first eyeshadow primer that I've really fallen in love with in a long time because of its opacity. And so this one, when it came out, I was so impressed. I mean, look at that, you guys. It's gonna take away any darkness that we have on our eyelids. It's going to seal in any oils that are there because I do use cream in the morning on my eyelids. It's not going to let those oils come through and then, you know, kind of crease your eyeshadow. I also take it clear up into my eyebrows. The reason for that is that uh, it really does help my eyebrow, whatever I use for an eyebrow product, stay on all day and clear into the tear duct because I do use shadow in that area as well. I just recently got these two pal palettes from Juvia's Place, so I'm really anxious to try them. This is the Nomad by Juvia's Place. I know you guys have probably seen it reviewed already. It's really a cool tone palette, but it has these pops of warms in it too. I just think that it's gonna be so fun for fall going forward. And then I got the Queen palette, um, Fumi times Juvia's Place, and it is so, pretty you guys I love these and I just love the color selection that they picked out so I'm probably going to combine the two of these this morning I always line my waterline first this is a Milani pencil I line my waterline first because I know that what's going to happen is do you guys see how shaky my hand is I have a palsy in my hand my both hands so what's going to happen is when I have my concealer on later it's just going to be a mess because my hand shakes around so I put that on first. For those of you that don't know, my palsy has um, been inherited, but it also was aggravated by um, a nervous breakdown that I had about 10 years ago. So I know that it can be distracting, but I also know that I love doing tutorials, so bear with me. The next thing I do is I actually trace underneath my brow line with a pencil to even lighten that up further. This one is from Benefit, it's the High Brow, and it's just their cream product. And then I put it into that inner corner for the same effect. And then I just lightly press it in. I don't know if you guys saw Emily Noel's video where she did her subscribers makeup tips. One of the things that she did in there was that she was doing dark colors first into the eye area and then kind of shooting it out with other colors. That's how I'm gonna start today. I'm actually going to start in this color down here, which is, it looks very gray, but at the same time, it does have some green in it, I can tell. So I'm just gonna start with a medium fluffy brush and I'll load that brush up. One of the tricks that I do in order to not have so much fallout is I will push that brush into a lid. This is just a lid that I had off of a brush switch. And then I will tap that off really good. And then I'm gonna go into the crease and I'm gonna start shading the crease. Using this dark color first reminds me of the CoverGirl trios or the Maybelline trios of eyeshadows where we just had those three that we would use on our eyes and it would say um, lid crease and brow bone or something like that and that's how we would do it. So that's what this is kind of reminding me of doing. So I'm trying to stay down here into the crease as much as I can, bringing it over and about a third of the way on the lid too out there. What's important about eye makeup at 51 isn't necessarily whether you wanna wear colors or whether you wanna wear darker, smokier, lighter. It's not about that. It's about making your eyes look bigger, trying to keep them from not looking so hooded and also trying to keep them from not looking so textured. And we, we do that through the way that we put on eyeshadow. I do mine, if you'll notice, I never do the windshield wiper motions. I always do kind of a slow pat or a slow stipple motion across there so that I make sure that I'm not dragging. What's gonna happen if you drag, you're gonna go dit, 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 and you're gonna get little parts of your eyeshadow that looks like it has creases in it and that is not what we want. Okay, because so far we've got a really smoked out look going. What I wanna do is I wanna use a color that's a lot brighter as the transition color. So I'm gonna go into like this peach kind of flesh tone, deep flesh tone color right here. This one is called Sister to Sister in the Queen of Hearts palette from Juvia's Place. And I'm just gonna pick that up on a fluffy brush. Again, I'm going to put it into my lid and pack down that shadow into the brush. And then I'm going to begin to lighten up just above the gray color I just put down. Now just keep going back and forth until you feel like you have built up 
what you want on there. Some people will want it darker, some people will want it not quite so dark, much lighter. So just really figure out, you know, what works well for you. Now I'm gonna take a stiff round brush and I'm gonna go into this deepest shade right here in the Nomad palette. And I'm only going to stay right down there on the eyelid about two thirds of the way in. This is normally how I do my eyeshadow almost every time. It just works for me. It's a really easy look. It's a really fun look. And you can use any different color you want to and it seems to turn out good. Now I am completely thoroughly intrigued with this middle color in here. You guys, it kind of looks like it's a taupe right there, but when you put it on your finger, it's very gold, which is so pretty. I love it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with that one and I'm going to use it on the two thirds of the middle part of the eyelid. Make sure you pay attention to your eyelash line when you're doing your shadows because sometimes they fall short just a little bit and cannot show up as good. I always use my fingers. I know some people don't like that, but I wash my hands before I do my makeup. Now I'm gonna go into the Queen of Hearts palette and I'm gonna use this color right here. And this one is kind of gold like that one, but and I'm just doing that very inner part of my eyelid. Okay, now that I got those two colors on, I'm just gonna lightly with my finger go over both of them, blend them together and blend it all the way to the outside of my eyelid in order to seamlessly put all of those colors together. Okay, the tape is coming off. You can see what a nice crisp line it does, but right here I did have some of that other color come through or that lid color, excuse me, come through. So I'm just going to lightly go across that and take care of that lid color. Okay, you guys, you're probably gonna think I'm crazy. At, at, at this point, I go back in and I put one more coat of this liner on my inner lid because other, or inner rim, excuse me, because otherwise it's not going to stay all day. This, and then the next thing I'm gonna do is my foundation. I spray this sponge with Fix Plus because I feel like it just helps to sheer out the foundation, but I also feel like it helps give a little bit of hydration to the foundation. The two foundations that I decided to use today are the NYX Can't Stop Won't Stop and the Light Illusion from Flower Beauty. This Flower Beauty one is way too light for me. It's in porcelain and the Can't Stop Won't Stop from NYX is too dark. That is the color I was using for the summer was natural. So putting the two together because the Can't Stop Won't Stop is quite matte, but the Flower Light Illusion has a dewy finish. Putting those two together really helps. And I have to reach back here because I'm looking at this foundation as I mixed it and it is way too orange. I don't know if you guys can see that or not, but right now it's just way too orange. I'm not gonna use all of that, but I'm a big mixer. I'm gonna put one drop of this blue LA Girl mixing pigment. So then I'm just gonna dot it across my face and then I start to work it in. What I think that people that don't like foundation, I think one of the things that happens as you age is you have to do a lot more with your foundation than you did when you were younger. As we get older, not only do we want the smoothing benefits from it, we want the coverage, we want to look more youthful with it. And I think that the problem comes is when we don't take enough time with our foundation. A lot of people like to use the brush first, that's fine. A brush does put down quite a bit more foundation. So if you're somebody that likes a lot of foundation, that might be the way to go for you. I take everything all the way down my neck and I even do my chest because I, I know you guys can't see this very well, but my chest is really red. And so what happens is I have to go all the way down. Today I have on a crew neck, so I'm not gonna have to go down you know, too far, but I do still go all the way down. I make sure I go up into my ear line so that it blends seamlessly up that way and as far back as what I'm wearing my hair at. You can really take care of your blemishes by pressing your sponge over that blemish. I have two that are right here that are driving me crazy. And if you just press instead of even bounce around, you're gonna get rid of those. Then I also go back here where I had all that discoloration and I press it in too. And I make sure that I press across my jawline where you're actually going to have the demarcation between your foundation and your neck if you don't pay attention to that. Okay, next step is concealer. Concealer is one of those that is so 
tough to master and I'm sure you guys would agree we're always on the hunt for the next perfect concealer and it just never seems to come around I'm really enjoying the Revo makeup revolution conceal and hydrate their new one and what I want to tell you and this is very very important start with a bare minimum because we've already done the color correcting on our eyes and so really honestly all I do is I like put one dot on each side and then I'm because I like the warmth of my finger to blend this in, I pat this in across there with my finger. And I think I said this recently in another video about highlighters, it's so much easier to build up than it is to take away makeup. So I feel like that's the reason that it's so important to do our concealer light-handedly in the beginning because we can always put more on but taking it off is a bugger once it starts looking really cakey. Okay, so now I just got this new palette from Hourglass. I love getting their holiday palettes. This one is the Ghost palette, and it has these colors right here that are the ambient lighting powders, and I love to set my under eye makeup with those. So I will just mix them together with a really, this is just a dual fiber brush. This is a knit brush. Um, it's not too terribly dense, so it's not going to lay down a lot of product. And I will just very, very lightly go in there and touch under my eye area. I don't dust a lot on there because if you do, that's when you're gonna get that really cakey look underneath your eyes. Now I am gonna go in with a little bit of powder to set this because it's humid here today. This is the Flower Light Illusion Powder in Porcelain. I really love this powder. It just makes my skin look just perfect. And I'm just gonna lightly hit all of the places that the foundation went. Next, I'm gonna do one of the things that I feel like is an absolute for any aging woman. Please do your brows. And the reason that I say that is because as we age, not only does our hair thin and our eyelashes thin, but our eyebrows thin a lot too. And the eyebrow really can frame that eye and give it a lot of depth and dimension and a really youthful look. So I'm just gonna really quickly go through what I've been doing lately that I feel like has been kind of along the lines of more youthful in my eyebrows. Instead of a pencil lately, I've switched over to using a pomade. This one is from Maybelline and this is the tattoo one and I think mine is in ash brown. It's a really good color for me. It matches the color that my hair is naturally. Anyway, it matches the color that my hair is naturally. Now what I do is I take that and instead of filling in anything below the, la the brow line, I'm going to only go up into the brow line as high as I can bring it. And then I do bring the tail out just a little bit more. Now what you're gonna see is immediately it just did a frame on there, but you, of course you gotta keep going with it. So, and then I go into this part right here and I kinda give it a little bit of light dimension to bring the inner part in a little bit. And then I just start working it until I get to where I feel like my eyebrows are built up enough that they don't look odd, if that makes sense. I do them a little bit thicker than I've been doing them in the past and it just seems to be working really well for me. You can really tell that not only is it defined, but now it looks so much thicker. So now I'm gonna just run my spoolie through it and try and make it look a little bit more natural. And then I'm going to put a setting gel on it. This is from the Brow Gal. It's one that I've had for a long time. I'm just trying to use it up. It has a really teeny spoolie. I do like it a lot, but there's other ones from the drugstore that I think are just as good. All right, in the Ghost palette, there is also a pretty bronzer in here that I'm gonna use today. I just hit where the sun would normally hit, which is your forehead and your cheeks across the bridge of your nose and your chin and I do down my neck, and I feel like I'm not quite so pasty. All right, as far as the contour goes, I've been doing a lot less contour than I have in a long time, but I still have a really high forehead. This is uh, from Sephora. This is one of their, it is their contour blush, bronzer, the, all that stuff that they have in their single pots. But that color, I think it's called Second Chance, is like the perfect color to do all of your um, contouring with because it's very, very cool tone. So it's going to make it recede and not stand out if it were a warmer tone. Then I just push the color towards the brow picking up a little bit more color and I'm gonna do right here on my cheeks. 
because I've noticed that since I've been losing weight, I have had, you know, get some sunken in cheeks going on here. But right here, I want to just have just a little bit of contour. And then I'm going to do it around the perimeter of my face and I'm going to push it out towards my ear. And then I'm going to do my jowls. I have jowls and they're just like, you know, that seat, that saggy part that starts to happen right here. If I contour that very lightly, then it can kind of reseat. And then of course the double chin right here. If, if you have a pronounced chin and you do this and you put your contour on there, then you're gonna kind of have it just kind of disappear on you. And now taking it, the contour down your chin kind of follows that darkness down a little bit. So if you have a sagging chin, it can also help with that as well. Now I don't do a lot of nose contouring. What I'll do is I'll just pinch this brush and I'll go just along the tip of my nose because I don't like how fat the tip of my nose is, but I'm not like crazy about it. I don't get, you know, really insane with the contouring. So I just do it right there on the tip of my nose. One of my favorite blushes of all time is from ColourPop and it's their super, super shock shadow formula, but it's in the blush. And it this is between the sheets. And I have had this for quite a while. I have hit pan on it, but I love it. And the thing is, is I use this um, angled stippling brush from it that I got off of, off of QVC, which I love. It just seems to lay this cream to powder formula down so pretty. So I always start my blush out here in case I have too much on the brush. Then it's not going to, you know, start out with a, you know, just a dot right there. So I always start start out from the outside and I work it into the front and I actually don't go I look at the middle of my eye iris or the color of my eye and I don't bring my blush in any further than that a lot of people will smile and bring it right there on the apples of the cheeks for me as an aging woman that is not as flattering as you know trying to pull this whole color theme right here up so that's why I did the contouring is to be able to, you know, give the illusion of a cheekbone. And then that's why I'm pulling the blush up and around. Okay, my next step is going to be my highlighting. And I love this highlighter from Cody Airspun. And this is Snow Much Ice, I think. So all I do, there's a little pad in there or a little powder puff in there. And I just take my fan brush and I get it on onto my fan brush from that because there's usually a ton in there. One of the things as an aging woman you don't want to do is go like this because we have these lines right here. I have a lot of expression lines, laugh lines, deep wrinkles right there. So I want to open up my eye for one thing and then I always want to pull that a highlighter down. I don't want to go across like this in the beginning because what happens is if you hit one of those wrinkles, you're going to have it look like it's skipped and it's going to show a lot of texture. The other thing is I am, believe it or not, starting with a very, very light hand. This is just an extremely strobing highlighter. So I'm going this way along the grain, if you will, of my cheek or my wrinkles right there on the outside of my eye. The nice thing about doing highlight, and I feel like this for anybody, if you're light-handed enough, you're not going to show any of your texture, your large pores, that kind of thing. I like it to be right there on my cupid's bow because then when I outline my, my lips, it looks a little bit bigger. I do like a little bit here on my chin, not too much. I'm not one that likes to do lots on the tip of my nose. I don't like my tip of my nose to glow too much, so I just do a little bit. Now with that same highlighter, I'm going to take a little paddle brush and I'm going to get some of that highlighter on that little powder little paddle brush. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do the inner corner of my eyes. I feel like this is really important for us when we age too because so much darkness is in that inner corner. So I'm using that same highlighter from Cody and I'm just lightening up that whole entire corner. And I know that this, and in the beginning when you start doing it, it might seem like I don't think I can do that, but really you guys, it's an important step because it will make you look more wide awake and not make your eyes look tired. Okay, now from back to the palettes. From these two palettes, I'm gonna choose an eyeliner. But what I'm actually going to do with it is I'm gonna smoke it out. I'm gonna use this color right here, which is a gray, but it has a lot of shimmer in it. So I'll show you it on my finger. It does have some metallic look to it. And I'm gonna spray a small smudger brush with fixing spray. And then I'm gonna go into that color load up my brush with that color and then I'm going to just lay that outside here and I'm trying to connect this eyeshadow right here with about half of my eye underneath. I always do keep a rag in my lap and so I'm going to wipe off that brush, that smudger brush. I'm going to take off all that color 
And then I'm going to go into the Queen of Hearts and use and pick up a little bit of that purple. And I'm just going to smudge a tiny bit of that purple underneath just for a little bit of a different look, a little bit of a different dimension. I'm going to spray my face first with the fixing spray that I have. This one is from Makeup Revolution. I think this one is the coconut one. And then I'm going to go in with this L'Oreal Lumi Shake and Glow Dew Mist. I really like the finish that this gives to my face. Then I'm going to take my beauty blender that I used earlier and just really lightly go across the face, making sure that there is no dots of that spray anywhere on my face. Next thing I'm going to do is eyelashes. This I feel like is so important, you guys. I think I'm going to do a whole entire tutorial on eyelashes because I do a several steps with my eyelashes and if I sat here, it would be in a whole other video. But what I love is that recently because of an eyelash serum that, I, serum that I've been using on my eyelashes, my eyelashes have grown really long and thicker. So I feel like it's really important for me to curl them because they're straight, but curling them makes them look even longer, even thicker. So I curl them first and I use the Shiseido Eyelash Curler, which I think makes all the difference in the world. I never get any tugging on my eyelashes, and I think that is just huge. And then I go in with my liner. This is a Maybelline um, Felt Tip Eyeliner. And I go in as tight as I possibly can. I'm going to immediately take my mascara. This way, the lashes don't fall out of their curl and the liner that has just hit those lashes doesn't interfere with my mascara. I'll go down there and I'll wiggle and I'll pull until I get my lashes to start really looking good at the base and then I'll hit the tops of them. I rolled my eyelash wand a little bit in my fingers and I hit the tops of them to make them look longer. This by the way is Milani's uh, Most Wanted Lashes Mascara. I've really been enjoying this one. It's a really good formula that will build up, lengthen, it seems to separate well. It seems to be pretty good for volume too. When I do my bottom lashes, I don't seem to be able to do them very well unless I use a wand that has the little fanned out part on the base. So I always use the Benefit um, They're Real. Seems to catch every single little lash on the bottom for me. Plus it's quite waterproof, so I will run it over the top of these lashes that I've been working on on the top. Okay, lately I've been really enjoying lining my lips. I don't have any Botox or anything in my lips, so my lips look really thin when I'm just like this. They're just like, they just don't look that great. So what I do to make my lips look a little bit fuller and have a little bit more volume and even to kind of take away from the lip lines that I have as I make, as I age is I start right here in the bottom and I do a little bit below my actual lip line and I do that at the cupid's bow too and I'll just show you because I can't talk while I do this. So even though my hand is pretty shaky, you guys can see that I took in the whole bottom line of my lip and just a little bit underneath it. And then as I go up on the sides, I'm actually going to follow the line. And then just a tiny bit above where the cupid's bow is. Okay, and then I'm going to take Maybelline's Warm Me Up and I'm going to use it on the out, outside of my lips. leaving a spot in the middle for the next, next lipstick. And then I'm gonna take Blissful Beige from Maybelline as well and put it in the middle. And then I'm gonna blot it lightly. And then I'm gonna put some gloss on top of it. Okay, you guys, there are a few tips and tricks for you for a 51-year-old woman, an aging woman. I hope that you did enjoy it. I wanna get really close and show you all of the makeup from the side and then to the other side so that you can see all of it. So you guys, one of the things I wanna to say to you, this isn't like a natural makeup look. It isn't one that you can do in five minutes. I realize that. But if you took these tricks, you put them all together, you can really do your makeup quickly. So it's really not gonna take a lot of time once you decide which of these you want to use in your makeup routine. I hope it was helpful. I hope there was several things in here that did help you as a mature woman, or even if you're not a mature woman, I hope there were things that were kind of tips and tricks that might have helped you too. If I missed a tip and trick that you have to have into your routine, will you please let me know below because I would love to hear from you. So I hope that you did enjoy the video today. 
Thank you so much for spending a part of your day with me. I love you all very much, and I will see you all in my next video. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.